The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of the speakers and panelists and do not necessarily reflect the position of the Ethos Institute for Public Christianity and its founding institutions and organizations. Is Jesus God? Migrant workers and human rights from a Christian perspective. Marriage and family. ISIS presents a much bigger threat. How do we integrate the Bible with our scientific understanding? Are you able to actually describe and articulate clearly your own sense of purpose in life? Thank you for coming for this uh, launch. Um, so I entitled my monograph, Seeking the Shalom of the City, obviously from um, Jeremiah chapter 29. Um, it's become a very hot topic. It's a, it's a subject that everybody seems to be interested in. So I thought I would spend some time looking into the, into the topic. And I want to thank um, my previous school, I was at East Asia School of Theology, for the sabbatical to do this. So I'm glad to have Lawrence with me um, because we've had conversations about cities and what we're doing in cities and he does quite a lot of stuff as well. So I thought it would be fun just to have a chat about cities. And, um, and it's, I mean, we're a small number. I'm, willing to take questions as they, as they come along. You know, so if uh, we have, we've got like six, seven broad questions that we're going to, dis to look at. And you know, anytime you, you just raise your hand and you know, we'll, we'll be quite casual about this, okay? Um, yeah, uh, is this, no, can, yeah. Um, let me start with the first thing. Why? I am interested in cities. Lawrence, why are you interested in cities? <laughs> First of all, thanks, uh, Kim Kyok, for inviting me in this conversation. Um, so tonight, I think uh, I've been invited to tell stories. Uh. She's the thinker, I'm the, just the storyteller. <laughs> okay, so, so the first question may be, um, I think for those of us who's who has um, you know, lived through Singapore you know, over the last few, five decades, you know, may be able to uh, resonate with my own journey. I think my fascination with story, the city um, maybe grew because I grew up in a kampong, you know, way back in the 60s. Right? Singapore used to have a lot of kampong. And uh, you know, I remember as a child, uh, there were a few family trips that we'd take you know, when we leave the kampong, and it's to two places in particular, I remember, Topayo and Queenstown. Uh, why? Because these were places that had the roundabouts, you know. So we always remember, and then got fountain in the middle of the roundabout. So this was the city to me, for a kampong boy, you know. And then the, later on, I think um, when I was um, in about 10 years old, my family, we moved to Geylang. You know, so I remember distinctly, um, my first morning when I woke up in Geylang, the wrong 15, because uh, it was different than the kampong life, because you can hear the noise of the cities. I remember it vividly. You can hear the birds chirping. You can hear the sounds of uh, people starting work. And we were living on the third floor on the, the uh, townhouse, right? And then below was a kaya factory. So you can not only uh, hear the noises of them preparing kaya, but you could also <laughs> smell the kaya, you know, and the steam coming up, rising to the third level. And then all around through the day, you can hear um, the drum, the drums of lion dance troops, the, the many of them all around. So this was to me, the life in the city was so different. And then we, instead of being driven uh, on a school bus to school, we walked to the school, which is present day health surf. You know, oh, okay. so that was my primary school. <laughs> so, we, so we discovered not only the main street but also the back alleys. That's where a lot of exciting things happen. You know, so somehow or another, this fascinated me as a boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, why I am interested in cities is because um, its cities are where we live and move and have our being. Um, cities shape us um, more than we realize. 
uh, cities are where the majority of the world population live, especially from now on. Um, cities are alive, dynamic places. There's so much to do and to be in cities. Uh, cities are where there's a lot of human culture, there's history, activities, and so, so I enjoy exploring cities. Um, life in the city, let me... So he shared some stories about life in the city for me. Life in the city is, is different, it's a little bit more personal. My father, God willing, will be 91 in October. He lives alone. Um, he is, he's old and, and he's, he's stooped, he walks very slowly. But often on Saturday nights, we'll take him out to the mall. And people are very kind. Um, people will walk around us, nobody will, you know, get impatient because he's slow. Um, we go to a restaurant or coffee shop and they'll say, oh uncle, you, you sit here, this chair has a back, you don't sit here because it's, a, you know. And what, you know, the past two, three years when we take him out, people have been kind. And, and I think this is a, a mark of, of what a city can be. And, and I'm, I'm glad to live in, in this city, I'm glad that um, Singapore's like this, and you know, we, it's very random, we go whichever mall, um, and, and so far, thank God, it's, we've had very good experiences. Um, once, uh, so Dad lives alone, he, he goes, to, goes for his morning walk. Uh, once he fell um, on the road, near a post box, and it just so happens somebody was going to post a letter. I mean, who posts letters nowadays? Somebody was going to post a letter and she helped him up and at least brought him from the post box to the entrance of his estate where the security guard was and then they could help him back up. So, life in the city is... I mean, that's, that's a good, good thing about life in the city, a good thing about life here. Um, Small contrast with a, a, an experience we had when we were in Delhi. Um, so we were in Delhi, we stayed in the YMCA, and in about five o'clock, just before dinner, we thought we'd go down and have a walk, um, my husband and I. So we, we went walking down the, the road, and then um, very soon, a young man sort of like caught up with us and, and walked with us. Then he started chatting, he says, oh, you know, you're a tourist. He said, yeah, obviously. I said, so you know, you're a tourist, like, you can go here, you can go there, you, you might want to see this and, and see that, which was, which was all very helpful and very interesting. And then, um, so we, we walked and, you know, and then after a while he, he looked at it, it's gonna get dark soon. It's not safe for you to be out here. I suggest you go back to the hotel. Very interesting. So um, I kind of like, uh, why are you telling us, oh, I'll get good karma for this. I said, well, great, <laughs> I'm glad if you get good karma, sure. Uh, but we, we took his advice and we just turned around and, and we walked back. Um, so just life, different experiences of, of life um, in the city, but um, that's, what, that's what cities are. You know, they, they're diverse, they, they can be wonderful places, and um, again, thank God that we've had just random strangers who have been who have been kind to us. Anything else you want to add, Lawrence? Life in the city. Life in city. I think uh, also. I think we, in Singapore, um, as in many other cities, right? I think they are places with a lot of history and a lot of memory. So as I continue my uh, reminiscence, uh, this gives me a good opportunity this morning to think about what I, I, I have been through in my life. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was uh, again leaving that little Geelong district and finally going to a school, right, secondary school, <laughs> which was in town. I remember my bus rides, you know, it's about an hour long every, every day in the morning and a bus ride home. And I enjoy the morning bus rides because you're riding in through town, through North Bridge Road. And I remember again very vividly because I'm quite into the visual, you know, person. So, 
I remember the, the colours of all those uh, shop houses along North Bridge Road and uh, you pass by a lot of Indian restaurants with the smells again, you know, the sights, smells and the sounds. And then you remember the, those days they had cinemas, you know, and those sign, signages were painted, right? So beautiful. So I'm into visual art. So I love all these uh, painted signboards. So these were the memories of the city going into a really a, almost like a wonderland. You know, where you see things that you don't get to see in your own residential area. And then, of course, there's the Singapore River, right? Um, and if, for those of us who can remember, the bus that we took, it stopped near uh, current day Clark Key. So th those was where they had the vegetable, central vegetable market. So it was really smelly, you know, and all the things. By then, they, 7 o'clock, they were throwing all the ends of the vegetables into the Singapore River, you know. So that was one of the things. Uh, the, the cleaning up the Singapore River was another great feat. Yeah, all that to say that actually a lot of cities have um, places with a lot of memories and a lot of history. So I enjoy cities because uh, everywhere I go, the cities, whether in Shanghai, the first stop, every time I go to Shanghai, I will go to Xi Jiahui. Because I will tell people, or even for myself, I will just go back that uh, memory lane and say, this was how Shanghai started 500 years ago, you know, by uh, Xi Guangqi, who was a Christian, by the way, you know, a retired prime minister of China. And then you go to Beijing or walk the streets again, and then think about, these are the pavements that the emperors of China used to walk. Right, I'll go to the little lakes and all that. This is where they go with the royal families and the Huan Zhu Gege and the, the princesses. Yeah? So there are a lot of, of uh, history in the city and I think it would be fantastic if we can learn to appreciate, you know, with all the modern amenities. Mm -hmm. Also that, um, you know, we, we need to, to see that the cities have history and soul, you know, mm -hmm. and so how do we enjoy the cities here? Yeah? Mm. But there are many issues in the cities. And um, so what, what motivates our ministry in the city, as, and us especially as Christians? Um, I think that it's, there's a variety and, oppor and many opportunities. We can do so many things in cities. We can engage at so many levels. And ministry in cities can be wide and impactful. People in cities tend to be more flexible, uh, more open to different ideas, unlike those in the rural areas who might be very stuck in their ways. So, um, therefore, there's, a, there's opportunity for us to, to engage with people um, and to, to do different things with them. I think the other thing for Christians is that Christian theology is particularly uh, well-grounded and gives us a good undergirding for ministry in the cities. Um, for instance, our anthropology, uh, the way we look at human beings, we have a good idea of who people are. We, we know that people uh, have the potential to do good, but we also know that we're marred by sin. And so I think we have a, we have a realistic understanding of, of human beings. Um, we have an ecclesiology, we have, a, we have an understanding of the body of Christ, people. And so, because we are a body of Christ, we are not, um, we, we can work with others, we, we should be happy to work with others. Um, we can um, be aware that there are different gifts and strengths that, that people can bring, because you know, you're the hands, the feet, the, the eyes, the ears, um, and, and therefore, our ecclesiology then helps us to, to do partnerships in ministry. I think as Christians as well, we have a vision. We have a vision of what life could be. We have a vision of a heavenly city whose architect and builder is God. And because of this vision, it, it, um, gives, us, it gives us, it propels us in um, what, can, what a city can be, what it can, what it can look like. Um, the, the passages in, in scripture of, of yeah, the heavenly city coming down out of Jerusalem whose light um, is, is, is God. So all this I think helps us to, helps Christians then to, to be able to do ministry, to, to do a variety of ministries, to do, um, 
to be to be willing to experiment to do different things, um, uh, and and I think therefore have a very positive influence in the city. What do you think, Lawrence? Ministries, ministry in the city. Yes, I think um, you know the Bible is uh, replete with many references to cities and urban missions and all that. And I think um, I think in your book, you know, this is a very well written book, and I commend everyone to not only buy and read it but to share it because I think it tells us about uh, how Christians actually have a long history of engagement in the cities. Right? It's been said that. Um, the Bible begins with the Garden of Eden, but you end with the city, the heavenly uh, city. But uh, within it, even I can think about the refuge cities, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So cities were meant for people, not only for the innovators and dynamic people and a lot of uh, possibilities, but also for those in trouble. You know, they can uh, seek refuge in cities. And of course, from the mission's perspective, um, there are so many examples of strategic missions accomplished through the gateway cities. Um, Paul's example is a good uh, one. You know how he, he went to all the key gateway cities, and after proclaiming that he's going to arrive in Rome, basically his his uh, gospel is more or less you know preached mm. right to the ends of the earth through the road from Rome. So I think the the Bible and as you mentioned the church. Um, I, I really feel that uh, our ecclesiology uh, must be really strengthened in this, this way to help us realize that the church can play a very important role in urban missions. Um, I always uh, uh, say facetiously that the Singapore church is an urban church but doesn't understand urban missions. Uh, sometimes we are, we, we are doing things but we don't understand uh, the significance of what we are doing and the impact that we can have on the city, you know, it's it's kind of a by the way kind of thing rather than very intentional. So perhaps if we can recover this ecclesiology and what does that mean to have this sense of uh, urban church, you know, uh, intentionality, I think that will be very helpful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so ministry in the city and um, I don't. I don't know whether this this is a familiar. I, I, uh, it's a church in a city, and this. If if you realize that, um, um, it's also it's All Souls Langham Place, uh, John Stott's church, and and I, I it took me a while to find this because it's really a church in the city. This that's the church, and this is the city. I mean, it's smack in in London. Uh, Ox Oxford Circus, which is you know the, the shopping district of London, and and it took me you know I was like really wanting to, a picture of of what does it mean for to be a church in the city, but what is the city and um, okay I, I um, so I I suggest that sometimes I think when we do ministry in the cities uh, we we're only operating at one level so. Um, I'm suggesting that there are three three levels that we can be looking at in a city. Um, first, okay, and, and I use I use the F1, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, as an example. What is F1? Um, it's 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 a night race, and there are something like what 12, 15 cities in the world that have F1. So that Singapore is one of them, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal that Singapore hosts the F1. But when you look at the F1, um, I, I see it at three levels. You have, you have the event itself, right? Um, you know, the car race, um, the weekend. What goes into the, into the F1 is what I would call the infrastructure. Because not just money, not just the organization, government has to come in to set certain policies in place to allow the night race to happen. You've got to make sure that, uh, so you've got to give permission for bus routes to be changed. You've got to close roads. And you know, you and I can't do that. It, that that's at a policy level. So th I see that as, as an infra the infrastructure of a city. But F1 creates 
a buzz. You know, the world's glitterati come down, there is so much excitement. You know, you're, I don't know what, 140 million people watch the race on TV and you know, they, they showcase Singapore. That buzz is what I would call the superstructure, the culture of the city. And, and we've got to be um, operating, we've got to see cities on those three levels. The structures, the infrastructure, what is underneath, as well as the superstructure. And I think we should be trying to do ministry at all levels. Very often, as, and especially in missions, and when you know, we go to poor third world city nearby, we end up serving the poor or you know, playing with the kids in the orphanage, which is, which is at one level. But very rarely, I think, do Christians hear, or even in missions, think about doing ministry and missions at, at other levels, at three levels. So, and especially at the cultural level, where um, it, it may be harder to touch, but Lawrence has got some examples, and he's been doing some stuff um, where he, he does some very creative ideas at, at the cultural level. Do you want to share with us? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, maybe I'll just share two. One, one uh, is an example of what we have tried to do in the HDB Heartlands. Uh, this was about 10 years ago. I think there's a church uh, in Hukang that's uh, very involved with community penetration, right? <laughs> yeah, so they invited us to, uh, this is with the Asian Journeys, yeah? that's a social enterprise that I founded. And we were involved with the church in reaching a particular void deck space that the church had uh, invested in uh, to be used for a hub for promoting arts and culture in the heartlands. So long story short, over a year, we conducted like fortnightly talks in Mandarin, right? So they attracted a lot of uh, residents, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, mainly ladies. Yeah. So I was one of the speakers where so they were teasing me and saying, wow, you're a sir, you're a Because you attract all the aunties. <laughs> but we, we shared with them um, basically art appreciation, Chinese festival, Indian festival, Malay festival, all the different things. You know? In fact, uh, one of the things we did was uh, we introduced them to the history of Western art, which was a fantastic way of sharing the gospel. Because you look at a lot of this Western painting is the story you know, of the gospel. So they begin to, in fact, we gave them a copy of the Return of the Prodigal Son by Rembrandt, you know, full color, photocopy, and with the story of uh, Luke's story, but of course we didn't put the Luke, Luke reference in, right? just the story, so we give it to them and say, go and share with your children, your grandchildren. So that's one uh, way that we can um, actually creatively engage. And a lot of these elderly uh, folks, from, and they were all mainly organized by the RCs, the Residence Committee, you know. So they were very appreciative. They said, yeah, this is better. It beats uh, having all those talks about osteoporosis. We know that <laughs> all our spare parts need to be changed already, you know. So this is, and we, we help them to see this is part of fulfilling your life's dream, right? Yuan Yan Xing Si Ho Meng. You know, think about all the things you want to learn about art and beautiful things that you never got to do, right? So, of course, uh, it has to include a trip to the Singapore Art Museum, right, on a Saturday morning and all that. So, quite a lot of uh, interesting things that we can bring, and the church can actually have a lot of resources to share uh, beyond just giving out the four spiritual laws. <laughs> or to, uh, and when you celebrate the Chinese festival, as we spoke to the senior pastor of the church, and they were very intentional in all that. Even Mother's Day, they invited me to be the speaker because now build rapport already, you see, with, <laughs> with the ladies, you know, so they came. Uh, so we had quite a couple of hundreds of these people who came for the Mother's Day. And, and for that uh, message, I used Michelangelo's sculpture, Pieta, remember? where the mother Mary was holding the lifeless uh, body of a uh, son, oh, that brought a few tears to the eyes, you know, because some of them actually had experience you know, what it means to lose an adult child, you know. So I think all these are example of how arts uh, can be a fantastic bridge to the soul, because we are not just talking about uh, saving the spiritual soul of the, uh, the people, but helping to enlarge and strengthen their soul, because with all these sensitivities, um, the community, 
you know, can be strengthened. And I think that's a, the church can play this kind of role you know, using arts and other festive events beyond just the evangelist, evangelism concern. Yeah. Yeah. Then the other one, very quickly, is to, I was sharing with uh, Dr. Kwa that um, we, are, we have been working with a particular church in China you know, and, uh, and we are helping them to sponsor uh, the setting up of calligraphy, Chinese Calligraphy Society and using that as a way to engage their city. Right? And it has been um, very successful, thank God. And it has uh, won the acclaim of not only their local professional calligraphic society leaders and members, but also the city's uh, government right, officials, especially with uh, culture and education. So now they have, uh, we are work helping them to sponsor the setting up of more such calligraphic society in other cities in partnership with the local churches. Right? So we, we thought that was a brilliant idea. Then why not do it in Singapore too? So come January next year, Asian Journeys, I'm proud to announce, we will, we will launch our own Chinese Calligraphy Society. Right? And it's um, unique and different from the other calligraphic societies that there are many of them here already in Singapore by the, the different Tung Xiang Hui Kwan, you know, and even at the Waterloo Street. The difference is we are reaching the English educated Christians. Right, so that will lower the threshold for many of us who are interested but don't know enough Chinese language to get in, right? Secondly, uh, it's fantastic for spiritual formation because we will not only just write the Chinese poetry and verses but we are going to write Chinese scriptures, right? And thirdly, we are going to invite uh, others who are non-believers to join us including the non-Chinese, including the expatriates, including the migrant workers. Right, and including children as well. So it can be really a platform for inclusivity and we're looking for uh, churches who would like to partner us with that, you know, so that would be a fantastic way to, to reach out and uh, through culture mm. and the arts, yeah.